Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. I'm James Workshop. But together we are Modeling for Advantage. Well, mate, what have we got here, James? We have Adeptus Titanicus. Adeptus Titanicus. It's a Horus Heresy expansion. Uh, expansion? Uh, well, sort of. <laughs> I bought this over a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> I've been meaning to review it for quite a long time. I, Epic was my game as a kid. Okay. I did Adeptus Titanicus as a kid. And then I did Epic when it came out. Ooh, I wasn't so much of a 4K player. Did you play Space Marine? Uh, I think Space Marine came even later. I, I don't it, know what... It was, was, was that what the first one was Epic. called? <laughs> It, it had anyway, yeah, it's got a weird timeline, yeah. That's when name changes. Um, so, I just have, we just haven't got around to it. No. So today we decided we're going to do the review, aren't we, James? We certainly are. And the plan for this video is, if you want to start unwrapping it... I will. Uh, we're going to do a quick unboxing, show you the contents. We're then going to go away and build the models, because what put me off it originally <laughs> was the sort of Warlord Titans in the original start were over 100 pieces, and I'm like, I'm just not up for that. No. I'm not up for that at all. But these got a medium-sized Titans do, in, and baby knights. They do. They have got three uh, vehicles in them. We'll go over it in a minute, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so I was prepared to get into it on the basis of smaller. Mm -hmm. And I knew, like with Aeronautica, Epic is coming. Mm. Well, Epic is very, very coming. <laughs> now, I still haven't now, opened actually. the box. Um, so I think I should do that. So Fantastic. that's our plan for today. Shall I open her up? I think you should open it up. <gasps> it's not a side opener, so you get that like hors d'oeuvre, tapas, <laughs> smorgasbord. Choose your favorite nice. na name to describe food on trays. <laughs> Battlefield asset. Oh, I'm getting excited just Battlefield reading assets. words at this point. So these are like nice big pieces. They do, yeah. Fantastic. So that's going to be a bit of a reaver. Mm. We'll see some chaosy bits and some not so chaosy bits. Oh, like an fun. eye of Horus. They've got the Horus eyes, yeah. Got Horus them. eyes. <laughs> there are them. They're like hungry eyes, they but are. not as musical. <laughs> that's what they've got. They've got hungry eyes. So that's two, two identical yeah, pieces. That's going to be Warhounds. Mm. So the box comes with two reavers, two Warhounds, and two Carestus Knight Lancers. Which are knights. Which are knights with lances. Scale-wise, as I understand, the knights are like the size of space marines in this. Okay. Oh, I don't know what that is. Anyway, so then we've got uh, weapons for Reavers again. We'll get some pictures of these up, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Then that looks Reavery. Could be Warlord. That looks Reavery. That looks Reavery. That looks Reavery. We've not got any legs no, for these guys. I <laughs> feel that they them. deserve legs. Probably. We'll work that out in a minute. Mm. That's definitely There'll be destructions, right? Yeah, there will be. Just pile up the sprues. Okie dokie. Out, shall I sort them out into the types? Yeah. Rather than the speculation. That's, that's the two lances. I think there's some doubles on these kits is the point I'm getting at. Yeah. That's kind of fun. And we've also got this, which is... I think those battlefield assets that I was talking about. Which is kind of fun. And then the uh, templates. Yes. So they're like arcs of fire. Mm, things like that. And very the various cool. tokens you need to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's All right. A, they're really nice. Nice. I quite like those. Nice bits. Some mechanicum symbols. And then the PS de Resistance, what I've been waiting for all this time. Mate, look how thick it is. The templates. They're really thick. They're really thick. They're, like, they're, like, they're, they're different from the 40k ones as well. But the, the, I don't the, they're the standard those. size. They're the standard size. But they've got different markings on them. They do, yeah. Which is very fun. Mm. Ooh, I like the colour as well. I've been seeing the neon yellow and green ones for so many years now. It's quite nice to see blue ones. They did have an apocalypse one that was in this colour. Did they? Yeah, or well, very similar to this colour. I mean, it, it folded down, like you clicked all the pieces together to make a giant template. That oh, right. quite cool. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah, I've got them somewhere. So we've got those. And then we've got the classic Games Workshop insert, which I always think I'm going to frame and then never do. No, because they're always dinged up. This one's pretty good. Yeah, it's in not, not in bad nick. It's pretty good. Nice but this, art. But they've done it the wrong way around. <laughs> normally this yeah. is to protect the paper and the tokens yeah. and everything from the sprue. But they normally put the paper and tokens and stuff above that and the sprue oh, below okay. it. Do they? In a loose box. Oh, okay. Um, normally when I open the box, it sprues immediately and I get Now you come on. to mention it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and <laughs> hundreds of sprues immediately. So they've got uh, yeah, the key art, and then on the back of it, they're advertising, because of course they are. Why would they not? I don't think I'd frame the advertisement, but the front art. The front, no, nice. for the other things you can yeah, buy. Not that into advertising. No. We'll have a look at what's there in a minute. And we've got bases, many big bases. Actually, they are. The big. legs for the Warhounds yeah. are on the. They must. They're, heads. they're on there. Those are heads. Yeah. I, th I think there's a double, like you get two Warhounds on two sprues kind of thing. Yeah. So we're looking for another unique sprue somewhere. 
That looks very leggy. Those are Warhound feet for sure. Those are Warhound yeah, feet. Fantastic. Right, so that's, there we it's go. A double. Sorted it. So those are going to be the Reaver bases, which are bigger than I thought they were going to be. Yeah. That's actually a pretty big base. I've not seen these models. I've seen the Warlords, but not anything else. Yeah. And then those will be the bases for the Warhound. And I was convinced that those Lancers were going to be on like 25s, but no, that is a 50. That is a 50? <laughs> There'll be another one somewhere. I sure hope there is. Yeah, there it is. I thought there was supposed to be four of them. No, there's two. One each. Oh. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> Cards. Mm -hmm. Books. Instructions. You've got your destructions there. Dice unique to the game. A lot of proprietary dice Ooh. in that bag. And some dice not unique to the game with a really cool Titan symbol on them. Oh, like that. There's Titan D6. You're not having them, James. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Mm. It's not a Ziploc bag. This is a sealed <laughs> seal bag. bag. There's a lot of D10s in there. That's a rare addition for a game like that. That's how you can tell the difference between game and Head. They've got words on them. <laughs> Targeting that is head. That's how you can tell the difference between the bits that were made in the UK and the bits that were made in China. Whether the back's sealed or not. All oh, right, I see. <laughs> Normally, yeah. Um, and then the rule book, which is softback. Um, uh, and comes with many of the cards that you're going to need for all of the... The, yeah. yeah. Even the Karastas Knights have got reference cards with structure points and all sorts. They're weapon cards. Little cards. I weapon love, cards. I love it. You put them card. on your unit cards to see what weapons you got. It's a wiggler. <laughs> it's a wiggler. It's a wiggly stick. It's not, it's not a whippy stick. It's not a whippy stick, but it's this new. It doesn't whoosh. No. You can get, get some torque out of it if you try, though. Well, yeah. You can spank, but not slash. And then everything else you'd expect quick start guide. And then a bunch of these. More decal sheets than I would have expected. A bunch of these decal sheets. I'm guessing... Is there a the Chaos one and an Imperial No, it'll one. be for the different vehicle types, I, I would think. So that's Lancers, that's Warhounds, that's Reavers. Sweet. But do they have Chaos ones on? No. They're all Imperial? All Imperial. Boo! <laughs> Death to the False Emperor! Yeah, no, they are all Imperial. Interesting. Okay, cool. Got it. Guess I'll be freehanding those then. Uh, yeah, and then two reference sheets. You're playing Imperials, mate. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm the Chaos player. You're the Imperial no. player. No? No. We need to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> and then some crib sheets. And then some crib sheets, and then you And a bit of plastic that must have fallen off the, <laughs> the box very there. noticeably bright blue colour. I love that. Doofer. Cool. And I, and I, does it make it feel a bit more technical with these like etchings of lines it's, on? Uh, tactile, I don't know at can least. See it. You certainly... <laughs> I mean, I it's can't be rimmed. touched by it, but you can touch it, I yes. guess. It's rimmed as well. Like rimmed that. and rimmed. Ribbed and rimmed, wow. mate. I mean, what more could you ask for? Yeah. Right. We're going to disappear for a little while. We're going to build these models. We're going to play this game. We're going to come back to you and we're going to tell you what we thought. Mm. Be seeing you. Well, it's been a long time, James. It has. We're back. Hello. After many months. It was actually really hot, I think, the day we filmed the first bit. And it we're was. in jumpers now. Yeah, no, we're in jumpers. It's, it's gone cold. from late summer to <laughs> early winter. And there's a reason for that, isn't there? There is. We had about three hours of building the models <laughs> and we didn't finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took a whole one home. <laughs> a whole reaver. So in terms of building the models, I built the knights, uh, the, the Serastus knights and the Warhound. Yeah. And you built the reaver. I built both reavers. And both you built, reavers. But all of that. These are far more involved kits than I was expecting. Yes. The Thrasus Knights weren't bad. Oh, they were good. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so more complicated than a Space Marine, but not more complicated than a Dreadnought. No. <laughs> um, the Warhound definitely was a lot more involved. It was. Particularly in relation to the feet and the placement mm. and the soft glue. Mm. There is some keying holding the legs in positions. Yeah. But because we use plastic glue... <laughs> if it didn't set right first time, yeah. if it came off, those keys have gone. Mm. You know, like if you drop this model on the floor, mm -hmm. which John did, <laughs> and the leg popped off, there's then nowhere to key it back into gotcha. because it's all okay. fused together. Yeah, and yeah. What have Quite you? Fine keying. Um, but these were okay. Mm. I would say kind of um, Redemptor Dreadnought type complexity, so you can definitely get it wrong. Yeah. But it was doable. It was winning that. Notably on a model a third the size, though. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it is fiddly. And that's because the detail's pretty good. Mm. Some of the instructions weren't great. It wasn't always clear exactly no, what I, I was trying to do. Strong points in terms of as a kit, though, is when you finished, these weapons will... We've just got a little tiny bit of blue tack in there. Mm. You can build several of the weapons. You can't build all of them, but you can build several. Yeah. Um, and what you're missing is actually the plug-in point. Mm -hmm. I think there's a limited number of these. 
but you can clearly leave them free. We played a couple of games with this. Yeah. And no, we played one we game. We played one game and we a lot of them moving around the table going yeah. pew pew. And, and they didn't come out. And you can actually tell how effective that is. You can push them in place and leave them there to yeah. start with. Yeah. Interestingly, the guns are, are um, adaptable for both sides as well. Like you can put one on either side. Yeah. So the other Warhammer yeah. we've got has got. Um, same two weapons. Same two weapons, but on the other yeah. arms. Yeah. So you could have double laser just blaster or double plasma. So if you really care about the authenticity, there is actually a right and left option because of the cabling. Yeah. If you don't care, then the cabling is just going to hang out over one side. <laughs> if you use it. Or you could just cut it off. Yeah. And assume the cabling runs through the armature, which would make more sense yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, but downside with it for me, you. The amount of customization is quite weak. Very low. Very, very low. There's a couple of different heads. There was only really one way to put, not really. There's one way to pose the legs. Yeah, one That way. is the thing. There is one way to pose the legs. Otherwise, you're kicking wildly or whatever. Um, I think there's a couple of slightly different heads. And these top place, plates, you could put like an Eye of Horus You could, on, yeah, the other one's got the Eye of Horus. Or a vanilla one. Yeah. I knew I wanted well, these to be Mortis Legion mm. um, when someone else paints them. Okay, nice. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I was going at. Yeah. Now, the Reaver was a different prospect altogether. It was, it, yeah. Um, I would say that this is my least favourite kit to put together ever. And um, that's saying something, because you'll work in resin if you have yeah, to. I work in resin freely and happily in fact <laughs> right. resin is totally fine for me and i've put together some of the worst that forge world has to offer and then been like yeah that was all right right and i put this kit together um part of it was that the instructions are fine but and they've got follow them to the letter and i follow instructions to the letter but it had that issue of like when you're in school and someone photocopies a photocopy yeah some of the areas are very dark especially yeah. the legs the legs yeah. i messed up massively on both actually <laughs> so i did it once realized what my mistake was went yeah. back in and did it again that might be something to say about me more than the models but you have an idea of the complexity of this the legs are in something like 20 pieces each oh, goodbye the legs were more than 20 pieces each if i remember rightly yeah. you know because the, the, there's toes there's connecting bit i would say that you could build these legs in four pieces <laughs> <laughs> I, I the, no the feet were fine so uh, another part of it was that unlike the other models that you put together there isn't any keying so, right. so I was under the impression that you could like have You'd be a bit more modular with be it. Be a little you know? more. Like, have you some have to fun. Be perfectly stood, perfectly <laughs> yeah. straight. Have some fun. You know, have a tiny bit of fun with it. Yeah, I and mean, you but had to backtrack on all that. Didn't I you? had to backtrack on all of that while <laughs> while the glue was setting under yeah. my fingers. I yeah. had to backtrack on all of that and redo it because yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'll have it stepping forward a bit. Yeah, I wasn't trying to be brave. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just wanted it a tiny bit, and it completely failed. And the second time round, mm. I was like, no, I'm not going to go anywhere near that far. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like a millimeter in it. Yeah. And I still have to go back in and rechange it. <laughs> this one is barely stepping, and you can tell because the entirety of its torso is at a jaunty angle. Yes, <laughs> yes. But yeah, it, they were um, horrible to put together, um, and I wouldn't yeah. wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> this is the guy who haven't played the game. Said, "Yeah, but what does it look like with a warlord titan?" I'm thinking yeah. a 200 piece kit. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's leave it there. Yeah. Uh, the the <laughs> so the 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 models are. If you are a keen modeler, yep. you'll still not like this kit. Okay, <laughs> I, I will put an addendum on that. This looks lovely. <laughs> the finished product. Now great. it's together, right? Yeah. And six months have passed between me, me and this model. I yeah. have a memory of hating this model. Yeah. And now I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it is <laughs> and nice. I'm considering that I probably would do a couple more. Would you? <laughs> if, if it were necessary, I'd probably put another couple right. together. There are two Maybe of each of them. Two between. of the knights, two of the warhounds, yeah. two of this in this start set. So you do get the opportunity to mess up the first one, but learn something, <laughs> um, yeah. and the second one. So that that that's the one, and probably I think one of the one of the key obstacles to this. This is not an early entry point no. game. It's not a very accessible game. I think it's perfectly playable with without the Reavers in terms of like enjoying it. If you really really hate it, you could make a viable army with them. All right. In the game that we played. Mm. The Reaver ran the one of the Warhounds charged yeah. into a Reaver and smashed it up pretty bad. It did <laughs> very badly. <laughs> it was a very long charge. <laughs> it was a and very long charge. That puts a lot of dice on that charge, yeah. <laughs> and they collided. That was the kind of the modeling side of it. In in terms of the and just in, then to talk about the gameplay mm. itself. Now we have to give some shout out for 
Tabletop Standard. Tabletop Standard. I They have a playlist of how to play Adepts and Titanicus. I'd read these rules, things were getting confused in my yeah. head. I watched their playlist, it's probably 45 minutes in total, mm. breaking down each of the phases and how it works, which meant when we came to play, I kind of had much more understanding. Mm, I had none. <laughs> and you had none. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I knew what kind of results I should be expecting mm -hmm. and that kind of kind of thing. So if you wanted to play this game, I would definitely have a look. I found that incredibly mm. useful. Will do. Uh, that was what I needed to be able to like read the book and make yeah. sense of it. I remember when we first got this out and we were looking at the different parts of the book and my immediate reaction, as with all games, I've played a few at this point, is like, where's the quick start? Yeah, There's got to be something in here that tells me how to play a game not quick. A quick start. There's no quick start. The the section that pretends to be a quick start, which is basic rules, is, is about, the rules. It's about eight pages of rules, and it's them all, <laughs> except yeah. the advanced rules. Yeah, it's just yeah. the rules. <laughs> it's just the rules. So it took us a while to get into it. There were a first couple turns where we made mistakes, as with all games, uh, and, and we quite possibly are still making. And mistakes. we probably still are. Yeah, but we feel actually the learning curve on it. I mean, it's difficult to know what it would have been like if I hadn't watched that video. Mm. But the learning curve on it was 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 pretty sharp. Yeah, it's like we we went from like open the book, it's like no idea how to play <laughs> this game. <laughs> Watch a video, come yeah. back with an idea, works our yeah. way through step by step. I mean, our plan for today was we, we are going to try and play a game, but we're just going to bimble our way through yep. it until we get there. And actually, I would say by turn three, we pretty much knew exactly what we were doing. Yeah, yeah. There were still you know, moments where we'll, you knew what you were doing, and I was going, oh, I get that now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a lot. But. Um, not everything is on the crib sheet, but the but the turn six, the rules are laid out in the turn order. Mm -hmm. The thing is that sometimes in a game you need to know when something... You don't know if you've missed something if you haven't yeah. reached that in the turn order. And one of those things for us is the damage control step <laughs> is between movement and combat. Yeah. And you're thinking, we just got to the end of the turn and didn't repair any damage. Either it comes at the beginning or at the end. Where was it? Is it oh, no, it's, no, it's right in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> it's right yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Um, but some things do, which are damage related, like reactor mm. overheating happens at the end. So there was, yeah, there yeah. was some order of operations things were a bit weird. When you've taken a lot of damage, yeah. like there, there are, there's, what, five phases? Three of which involve the reactor in some way, plus the other ones if you push. Yes. <laughs> or, yes. Like all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, so in terms of the game itself, mm -hmm. I've got to say it was a much better game than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Th this is a very intimidating card. <laughs> Uh, we'll put some pictures up. There's a lot is. going on here. It just blank, it's intimidating. Yeah. Let alone all these tokens you've got to put on it. Yeah, it's a lot just of tokens. blank, there's a lot to work out there. But once you actually get into this card, it's like, this is stats, plasma reactor, void shield. Mm -hmm. All of this is the same thing, but three times, but for three different parts of the vehicle. Yeah. Like, it, you get into it really quickly and yep. understand what's going on. Yes. There's only like five things to understand. It's because it's dealing with locations and granular damage, because you're going to play the game with two to five models. Mm. And we understand why they're doing that. They have gone about it a kind of a complex way, or more importantly, using mechanics that are unfamiliar, yeah. particularly things that are additive mm -hmm. rather than targeting. So, what's my weapon strength? Well, it's this plus this plus this and plus this yeah. for a total. Not a six up to one. Yeah. Uh, you were thrown by the fact that you only make shields for... You make saving throws on void shields. Yes. You don't have an armor save. You just go straight to, do I do enough damage and how much yeah. damage do I do? Yeah. It doesn't help that it refers to it as an armor roll. Yeah. And, but it isn't a roll for armor. It's a roll to get through armor. <laughs> yes. It's a roll once you've got through armor, almost. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, I did get very confused about that. The game that we played... Um, it, it, just just to give you a kind of simulation uh, uh, expectation, at the beginning, a Warhound rams into a Reaver, does an amount of damage, yeah. the Reaver turns around and beats it up, mm -hmm. and it then spins around all over the place, <laughs> falling down and things, and is effectively out of the game for the rest of the game. Yes. But never finished off. No. There's a lot of rolling happens. On the other side, you're a bit less lucky with yours. Mm. Your Warhound attacking my Reaver. But then your Reaver makes some shooting across the centre of the table. Yeah. And catastrophically, with a sequence of dice rolls, not only does my Reaver blow up, mm -hmm. which considering how long the Warhound had limped on <laughs> under more threat, yeah. it blew up enough that halfway across the table it also took out my Warhound. The Warhound as well. Because the yeah. size of the reactor explosion is huge. 20 inch ring? <laughs> yeah. It was in the end. It was, yeah. was it 2d6? So we've got 10. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a 20 inch bobble mm. of boom. Mm. 
in it. So the thing that we weren't prepared for was you could quickly take what appeared to be quite severe damage, yeah. but then it was difficult sometimes to really push through that mm. damage and fit and get the engine killed. Yeah. Because it became a bit you don't actually like at end point you blow up. So at end point you roll the dice to see if you blow yeah. up. Yeah. So there's the amount of lingering on. Um which it, is highly random. It really felt like when you thought that your vehicle was about to die, it had about half left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just kept yeah, going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I fired thanks to your guidance, the right weapons in the right order. Yeah. Um and stripped your shields off, blew the thing up and it just blew up. Like <laughs> Absolutely. I mucked around with a warhammer for so long, I didn't realize that some good luck meant that a big thing could go down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we that was the only thing that died from shooting. Yeah, because shooting yeah. had been mostly ineffective. So that's the thing about playing the game more than once is, mm. is you grasp the basics of the game's meta. Mm -hmm. So James's Reaver had the missile launcher, which is a good street shield yep. stripper. It had a it had a decent high damage laser. Uh -huh. And it had a power fist, which James has been whining about the whole game. It's been I worse have. than the chain fist. I have. I think it's marginally worse, if yeah. worse. But I had two, once the void shields are down, weapons on mine. Yeah. And you, the only time you had no void shields was because in melee, your void shields <laughs> yeah. were going to They fell off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so that, that kind of basic understanding, but it seems like we've been talking about this. You definitely want to take... The mixture of weapons yeah. is important because stripping void shields is one aspect <laughs> of the game, then converting that to yeah. real damage is another. It took us a little while of talking about it for that as well, because we came out of this game, went downstairs, and you were like, I'd put a combat weapon on everything, <laughs> was yeah. the first statement that you made. And, that, and uh, I disagreed immediately. Yeah, and, that, and that's, we've come away with this with two different yeah. views about what yeah. next. I yeah. want to think you want a seal stripper, a crippling gun, mm -hmm. and, a, and a combat weapon, and you think you want... I want idiots <laughs> to stop you from charging me yeah. and more guns. And more guns. With more, more bullets. Guns. With more bullets <laughs> and more dice. Which is great. Like, we would play two very different games. So the game. Nah. In, so the strength of the game was just, it, it was fun. And although the rules, you had to learn them because nothing about them yeah. was familiar. Nothing at all. The ballistic skill might have been familiar, but the rest <laughs> of it... Yeah. It, the rest of it is not familiar from, from <laughs> Command felt similar, and then they said, do it on a different dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Randomly, you make command rolls on a 4-up or whatever, on a D10 rather than a D6. Don't understand the logic of that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but certainly the weapon choices and stuff enjoyed the game. It was involved... But it was, it was, you repeated yeah. the same things a lot. Yeah. Um, if this was a 10 model game, I wouldn't play it again. No, no. At maximum five model game, I'll play this again happily. And, and also, I'll only have to paint and build five models. And to that end, we don't actually have them. Yeah. The knights do work quite differently. Okay. They appear as a, as a lance of one, two, or three models. They move and fight as a unit, and they don't have anywhere near the complexity of the. They've got no reactor. They've got no reactor and they've got no void shields. And no void shields, no, just a no. self. And they're not a lot of resilience looking at it <laughs> compared to the other stuff. No. Um, which is fine because you're using them as... Um, a shield wall. Door jam. <laughs> yeah, it's a door jam. It's, it's a stop. <laughs> Chaff. Um, <laughs> which those are the strong points. Downsides of the system, mm. the complexity. I found it was worth powering through. Oh, it for sure. Tough. We've, we've put... In total, probably 10 hours to prepare for this game. <laughs> Between the model building, the videos, reading of the rules, and playing the game from the we don't really know what we're doing. Yeah. Probably at, ten, at the 10 hours invested point, which includes building the model, mm. but not painting them, mm. um, we're at the point where I felt I, I could, I would, I know how to play this game. I, I would have another go at another game. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I yeah. think I get it. Yeah. But no, next I think time you have the rule book and you check all the things. Yeah. And we'll play an hour and a half game instead of a two, two and a half, half hour game. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, 90 minutes is the, not the maximum point at which I'll play a game, but it's the point where I'm always happiest. Like a yes. 90 minute game is, that is I complex think enough. 90 to minutes have still got energy. I'm yep. still cheering when you roll a six. Yes. <laughs> and 90 minutes. At two hours, I'm not cheering when anybody yeah. rolls it. And when a two comes up for movement, I'm very unhappy. Mm. Downside for me, downside with the game was the proprietary dice. Mm. Oops, sorry. They're a very important part of the game, and they are lovely, okay. and that they come Gorgeous. in the game. Um, but there are so many different types of dice here. Yeah. Uh, there's a location dice is one type. There's the order dice. There's the regular dice. Scatter dice. There's the scatter dice, D10. and there's the re order dice. Yeah, the reactor D10. dice. <laughs> oh yeah, the reactor dice. And on the reactor dice, 
There's the symbol for take one reactor damage, and there's the very similar looking <laughs> one for awaken the machine spirit, which is quite a different result. It's quite different. If these dice should be a different color, and it's not, it's because mm. you have to, you've got this pool of dice and you need to pick a particular one out of it. If it was one set of dice with pictures on and one with numbers on, it'd be fine. Mm. But there's several with pictures on. And the numbered dice have pictures on. And the numbers <laughs> dice have pictures on the sixes, <laughs> which again is nice, yep. but unnecessary. Mm. But I, I think a different, I'd want different coloured sets. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Ideally. Uh, what we were talking about earlier was when Epic wasn't necessarily that different, but like for the areas of the vehicle, if it had it, you rolled a d6. Like it was, and it was a table. Of the dice. And it was a table. Yeah. And, and like the orders would have just been like, you say what it has. <laughs> yeah. Rather than I think there was a, a token dice on it, actually. Or a orders. token. Yeah. yeah. And this would have been a d6 again. And yeah, it's, like just loads a of this. it's a table. And I get why they've done it. It's yeah. on a d6 round table because there's so many different ones. Mm. They're in this marble style. Just out in the eye, you couldn't pick out the Not one you were looking for no. easily. And the scatter dice would have been a different size from the yeah. rest of the, the dice. And all sorts of things would have happened. It's lovely that they include them all. Most of them are just tables that could have been the mm. dice mm. and quite easy to remember tables, quite easy to look at. Yeah. So that didn't work. Um, the trackers, so this is the second generation set. These were originally a much thicker card with holes punched in, which okay. means all of these markers you use to track damage had holes to punch into mm. in card that was thick enough to hold them. They've got this little peg underneath them. Whereas we ended up obviously on this thin card that we've got, we're putting them upside down, not enjoying the pretty <laughs> Mechanicus Cog. Yeah. We're just seeing a nipple. We are. <laughs> We're we just are. Looking Which at is, nipple. you know, fine. And it does slide around easily ah. on there. Um, so that I definitely would have preferred the older cards. The, the templates were fine. Mm. The movement was fine. It's nice to see templates and scatter dice. Just you from a nostalgic point of view, I like looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really nervous about firing blast weapons because <laughs> I didn't want to hit myself with them. Yeah, whereas I've got 10 years experience of being nervous about hitting myself with blast weapons. Does it make you less nervous or more? No, it's just fun now. It's just fun now. <laughs> it's just fun now. Absolutely. So, um, and obviously in terms of the timing of this, mm. I got this game long, long ago thinking this game might be all right, it might not be all right. Mm. But you know what this game tells me? I was around the first time they did this. This yeah. means that Epic is coming. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we've waited so long that Epic is in fact <laughs> coming. Probably has come before you see this video. Yeah, true, actually. Um, and we have ordered two boxes of it, mm -hmm. uh, which means we're going to have loads of Titans in our early Epic yeah. games before we've got the early ones. And that... So does this... I think it was £100, and I, mm. I could be as much as £20 out now on this. And because Epic's come out, I don't even know it's currently available. Is it worth £100? Yes. Yeah? Yes. I think the fact that it, they didn't change the starter box set for what, six years now <laughs> means that this box set came out at a time when £100 for a starter box was the normal price. Yeah. We're up closer to £200 now. Yeah. I imagine if this box came out as a specialist game, which is what it is now, it absolutely is. this would be an 150 to 180 pound box, and I would stop saying it was fine. Right at 100 yeah. quid with discount, probably. I think that this is a good yeah. box. I think it probably, if it's available, because the degree to which I know all of these things have been repackaged into the Legion mm. Imperialis stuff, and I don't know whether they're going to come with these, because that is the problem in terms of the legacy of this game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is you cannot play it without these data cards mm -hmm. and without these weapon cards, and you get in the starter box, this box, yeah. what weapons and things for the things that come in it. There are many other weapons, mm. and they come in different box. There's more than yeah. one Reaver box, there's more than one Warhammer with different weapon options. Uh -huh. I don't think this is much more complicated than Blood Bowl has been. And I played Blood Bowl for about five years without ever buying anything official. You just make all this stuff. Or right, print okay. it. Or whatever yeah, it is that you need to yeah, do. Yeah, like, there's a master sheet somewhere. This, the, they haven't made the rulebook for Epic for, what, 15, 20 years at this mm. point. From some edition, 2000 and earlies. Mm. And people still play it to this day. And oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. These guys that I mentioned. Real tabletop. 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 tabletop standard. Standard. <laughs> standard. Tabletop. They play original yeah. Epic. And Epic 30k, the, the, mm -hmm. the, and so forth. There's people starting now playing Epic <laughs> with friends who are starting now playing Epic who've never seen a real rule book, and they still yeah. managed to get through games fine. And I think yeah. these cards, think if this well. game is worth playing, yeah. these cards will survive much longer than this box set will. So who this game is for? I think if you um, you need to be up for the complex modeling yeah. challenge, you need to be prepared to be frustrated, put the time in, <laughs> refit things. Mm -hmm. 
even a, you know an experienced modeler is going to find it especially the reaver it's yep. not an easy kit to build it does produce a nice model even if the leg plates don't quite match in the middle it still looks great <laughs> it's a nice model these are not even painted no as a as a game so the kind of person that likes playing something like BattleTech, that likes mm. their game to be much more granular much more involved if you want the detail drilling down i want to shoot him in the leg <laughs> if you get a lot of value out of that i understand that they're on some level necessary in a three model game mm. But it's complicated rules to do that. It triples so, the number of models that this one model is. Yes, effectively, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, if you like that kind of game, I think it's good. And in terms of the results, because of the machine spirit yeah. stuff and the push in the reactor, it's very in-universe. Yeah. I feel they do a good job of that. You push the reactor too hard, and then everyone freaks out because the machine spirit takes mm. over, and the mech shuts down. <laughs> because the alternative is to lose it to the yeah. machine spirit. yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to go so far as to say that it's kind of a reskinned battle tech, but but slightly less complicated. It, it, a different it's, kind of complicated. It's a different kind of complicated. I think it's less complicated than battle tech is, personally, right. because that is this wasn't a wall that I needed to push through. This right. was just like I will get this eventually. Whereas battle tech is a wall I won't push through. It's harder for me to say because I played battle tech yeah. in the eighties. I didn't. <laughs> so so I look at it and I remember it being complicated, yeah. but it's not unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. No, it's completely unfamiliar to me. And I <laughs> yeah, had no yeah. intention of ever yeah, learning yeah, yeah. it. I, maybe the fact that it's a reskin version meant that I was like, ooh, Reaver Titan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah, them being yeah. this tall and really expensive, and now I get to play I mean, with them. It doesn't have an ablative armor in the same way no. as, as, as it does. Mm -hmm. So maybe the reskinning was what made me push through on playing a game that's quite similar to Battletech yeah. to an extent. But no, I'm, I agree with you that it is a complex game to get into. I don't think I feel like it's a complex game anymore now having played one game. Yeah, I mean, if you can get someone to show you how to play it, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. And it, and with a, like, but like with a lot of these games where the rules are complicated, I don't mind it taking time for me to learn the rules. I mind it taking me a lot of games or a lot of time before I really understand the choices I'm making. Mm. I don't mind losing. I do mind not really knowing what I should be trying to do. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. and the things around. But fortunately, with this, an el there's an element of like how much you should push your reactor and what you should be repairing mm. and which weapons are good. You need to lose a couple of games anyway. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> by which time the rules will have come mm. will have come with mm. it. On the whole, definitely we'll play this game again. Yeah. Definitely will enjoy it. I mean, we're going to make these up because we're going to do epic, and that is it. Looks like it's a very simple game, by mm. the way, which are sounds of. But I would definitely play this again. Like you said, I think three models is a, is a ninety minute game. Three models would be a 90 minute game if you For know, people you know what they're doing. And you don't have a wall on. And they're giant robots <laughs> punching each other and screaming, Engine kill! Yeah, hell yeah. And that's what it's all about, right? I hope this video has been useful to you, especially those of you perhaps that missed this, passed this mm. by first time round, of got in, getting into Epic and thinking, oh, do I want to look at this other thing? Mm. Yeah. And maybe it's given you a little bit of an idea. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.
Thank you.